been a while since I had been into an Ikea, but recently I ran in with my best friend and there was inspiration everywhere. So I grabbed some of my favorite items so I can share 10 different Ikea hacks for you that are perfect for Christmas, so stay tuned. This is Whiskey and Wit. My name's Whitney and on this channel I love to share DIY and budget home decor and tips, tricks, and tutorials around creating a DIY home that you love also on a budget. So if that's something that interests you, be sure to hit subscribe down below so you don't miss a future Whiskey and Wit video. So before we hop into, I wanted to note that all of these things obviously came from Ikea, but you can also find a lot of this stuff at Walmart, Target, even Goodwill, so you can take these concepts even if you don't live near an Ikea. My first hack is the Ikea candle section, and I found this originally when I was planning my wedding. I wanted to do pillar candles on our tables, and the ones everywhere were so expensive. So I found these, which are super tall, and they're only $4, $3.99, which is huge. This medium sized one is $2.99 and the smaller one is $1.99. So this whole arrangement is about nine bucks, which is a steal compared to other stores. So don't sleep on the Ikea candle section. I wanted to do a simple hack to add some faux greenery to make them feel a little bit more cozy for Christmas time. Candles always give me the Christmas vibe, but these will just kind of take it over the edge, but still look very classy for Christmas. So I'm taking some pieces of jute twine. I cut three pieces because I've got three candles, about 36 inches, give or take long. And then I have these little trees from the Target Dollar Spot last year that I don't plan on using. So I cut off these little faux cedar picks. You can do whatever greenery you want. You can even do live greenery to get that scent, which would be awesome. But all you're gonna do is take your little sprig, tie it on with some jute twine. I wrapped it around maybe four or five times and tie it on. It's that simple, but these look so high end. It's something that you would probably probably see West Elm, Pottery Barn, and this is super cheap. So this whole arrangement is gonna end up coming out to about 10 bucks. You can do as many candles as you want. I decided to do three because I like to follow the rule of thirds. So things in odd numbers are more aesthetically pleasing is what that rule says. And I'm a subscriber to that rule. Also a PSA, if you're planning on lighting these candles, make sure your jute twine has moved way, way, way down or just take it off the candle for safety reasons. We don't need anybody lighting their house on fire for Christmas. Number two are these pitchers. I saw them and instantly fell in love with the shape. They're $4.99, so I ended up picking up two to do two variations of this makeover hack. I'm gonna take one and spray paint it with some red spray paint. This is just some I had on hand, so it's apple red. I also spray painted the other one with a flat black. To give it some texture, take a paintbrush and add some white acrylic paint. Then take your finger and kind of run it along the edge of your paintbrush, and that is going to flick the paint in little spots onto your pitcher. I ended up doing this for probably five to 10 minutes around the whole thing. And also if you get your paintbrush too saturated in paint, you may have to grab another one just because you want those bristles to be light so you can get that kind of sprinkling of white. I like that it kind of gives me snow vibes and the red on the white also feels like candy canes. Once you get it to your liking, then you can go ahead and let it dry. I gave it about 30 to 45 minutes and then I finished with some matte clear spray paint. You could also use a clear sealant, but I just went through and did this so that when I go to apply this decal, it wasn't gonna peel and also just to do the longevity of the spray paint on plastic. I decided to leave the black one as is, but then I just found this really cute gingerbread design in Cricut Design Space that I just quickly cut out on some permanent vinyl. I'm using Expressions Vinyl Transfer Tape here and carefully peeling it back so I don't peel up any of that spray paint I just added, but that clear sealant really helped with that. So here are the two side by side. You definitely don't need a Cricut for this. You could also freehand or you could add something else like a printable with some Mod Podge. But these openings are super cute to put some greenery in. I plan to use this in my gingerbread dining room. What I really like about this is the height. So depending on if you have an area where you need to fill more space between the pitcher and the greenery, which these picks were just a couple bucks from the Target Dollar Spot. Ikea also has picks in store. You can add some really needed height to give some different aspect ratios to your displays. The next Ikea area that you must visit, especially for Christmas winter decor, are their blankets. 
Amazon has some good ones, but I really love getting Ikea blankets. All of my blanket ladders have Ikea blankets on them and Christmas is no exception. I grabbed this really gorgeous red knit one as well as this black and white one with the fun tassels on the end for some texture. And then as I was leaving the blanket section, I also saw this awesome green one. So all three of these blankets were under 20 bucks. The red one was $19.99, the black and white was $14.99, and this green one was $12.99. So that's a great deal in my book. So on top of their intended use as a blanket to stay warm, you could also do a ton of different things to decorate with these IKEA blankets. One being using it over a table that you have in your house to create kind of a chunky knit vignette like I did here or you can throw it over an extra chair. This is just a dining room chair that doesn't fit in our dining room, so we have it in our living room. I tossed the blanket over the top, and then I just ended up adding a little buffalo check pillow to kind of add to the Christmas vibe to match my decor. My assistant had to come check it out, and he said, yes, mom, this is approved to go here. On top of that, this blanket ladder is actually its own IKEA hack. We've had this in our living room for years and I wanted to share it in case anybody else would benefit from this. This is actually an Ivar brace for the side of this particular kind of shelving unit that they sell, but you can get one of these for $12.99. It is unfinished wood and then I just went through and stained it with my favorite dark walnut. We've done these for our moms and did stains to match their houses. So for 13 bucks, you don't have to do any assembly. You just buy it like this and stain it. It's a great deal. Then I just like to layer up my blankets, my two Ikea ones, plus this red $5 one from Target. And then I like to have a nail above my blanket ladder to put different wreaths throughout the seasons. I'm just adding some jute twine to this Walmart wreath and I am hanging it over that nail. It adds some different color and texture to that blanket ladder. So it's not just blankets there. It's gonna make that area a little bit more visually appealing versus just hanging up all your blankets. I was literally mid-sentence with my friend in the store when I saw these $2 containers and I gasped and this is what started the whole let me do an Ikea hack video. How cute is this container? It's $1.99 and it screamed peppermint to me. So I brought it home, I took off the lid and I spray painted that with that same red color that I used before, so that apple red Rust-Oleum. I also took some flat white spray paint and gave this one two coats to make sure everything was covered. Now I didn't worry about taping the top because I don't plan on putting food in here. Be careful if you do plan to do that, but I don't. And then I got to work turning it into a peppermint. So it's about six inches in width. So I just went on Google Images, found a peppermint that I liked, and I just printed it out in black and white because I didn't need to waste my color ink. I cut along the outside of my printout and then I grabbed some graphite paper. This is the Arteza brand, but if you don't have graphite paper, just take a pencil, scribble on the back of your paper, and that will also transfer in a similar way. I used a pencil after making sure that the center of my peppermint pinwheel was in the center of my container, and then I used some pressure to transfer all of the different lines so that I would have a guide when I went to paint my peppermint. I ended up fixing any lines that I had an issue with when tracing and then it was time to paint. Now you're gonna wanna grab some acrylic paint for this because chalk paint will be harder to get the smooth lines. So I'm just using some regular Walmart holiday red acrylic paint and a small Walmart brush here. I'm going around and tracing the lines that I just made with that red paint. And this is something you could easily do with paint markers as well. I just didn't have one in red that I liked, so I decided to go with the paint. After I had all the lines painted, I touched up any of the edges. And then if you have to go back in with some white to touch up any blips, you can do that as well. Once my paint was fully dry, I just finished off the top with a little bit of Baker's twine and it was ready to go. I plan to use this as either a staging piece or something up above the cabinets in my kitchen. I'm kind of kicking myself that I didn't do more of them. And honestly, it wasn't that hard to paint. I am not huge on freehanding or painting. That's why I do a lot of tracing, but this was easy enough for me to do. And I think it is so fun and whimsy and perfect for Christmas. And it was about a $3 DIY, so I'll take it. This next hack is a decor find that Ikea has this year, and they are these expandable trees. Now you've probably seen something similar to this before. They even sell them at Dollar Tree, but what I love about these particular ones is that they are magnetic. So they are going to be great to have from season to season. You don't have to worry about losing the little sticky pieces or the clips. I am doing this here 
not very gracefully, but I am able to open the tree and close the tree one-handed while holding my camera. They've got two different sizes. They also have the same concept in a garland. The big one was $6.99 and the smaller one was $4.99, I believe. And these would be great for parties if you entertain at Christmas and they are very affordable and will last. Every time I go into Ikea, I always happen to leave with one of these cloches. I have so many at my house and I love using them. They're not just great for Christmas, they're good for a lot of different seasons. I ended up grabbing the $14.99 larger one, but they do have a $9.99 smaller version and you can put whatever you want in it. So you could do a kind of candy theme, gingerbread, I also really like to put these bottle brush trees in there. I recently bought these from Hobby Lobby and I wasn't sure how I was gonna use them. They fit in here perfectly and they just look really cute with the burlap on the bottom in the cloche. It's really hard to get a shot without a crazy glare, without the shot being dark, but you can see the gist here. Another idea that's a little out there but I like to do is to take some fabric or dish towels or here I'm taking a $5 thinner throw from the Target dollar spot in a color or print that you like that goes with your decor fluff it up a little bit, shove it into the cloche, and then you've got a pop of color and height for a vignette. So here, you're not too worried about actually seeing what's in there, but it adds a pop of red to a neutral sign on the right, as well as the little gingerbread mug on the left. So this is a great way to use extra dish towels or fabric that maybe matches your pillows and give a kind of fun take to the cloche for Christmas instead of just having a Christmas scene in there. I'm a big fan of Christmas trees in farmhouse cracks, but they can get really expensive. And so I was excited to see that they had these for $7.99. They're like a medium size. And the first thing I thought is this would make an awesome blank for a Cricut decal. But then I thought, you know what? I'm just gonna keep them neutral and put my trees in there. Well, this is an Ikea tree from a couple years ago and I thought it would fit perfectly. It didn't fit exactly how I wanted, so I transitioned to use one of these trees that they always have in the Target dollar spot. They're usually always the same size every year and this fit perfectly. So this is awesome. You can pop your trees in there and get that farmhouse look for much less than a vintage crack. This tray made an appearance on my channel back in the summer when I threw a DIY bridal shower for my cousin. We put their name and their wedding date on there and then people signed the tray and it worked so well. It's a $9 tray and it is a perfect piece to hack. So I started by adding some painter's tape around the outside so then that way I wouldn't get any black paint on that pretty wood. Then I took two coats of black chalk paint and covered it up. I only did two coats because I just wanted to make sure it looked like a chalkboard. Then I found this gorgeous SVG file when I was working on something else on design bundles and I knew I wanted to put it on this tray. So I cut it out on some smart vinyl on my Cricut Maker 3, but you could use any Cricut machine and you could also use any type of vinyl. It doesn't have to be smart vinyl. I ended up cutting it to a width that was two inches shorter than the width of my tray, just so then that way I had a little bit of a border around the outside, but I wanted it to be big and give a statement. Then I'm using Expressions Vinyl Transfer Tape here. I like to use that versus the Cricut brand because it's not as sticky, so when I go to apply it here, it's not gonna rip up all that paint I just put down. I start in the center with my squeegee and work my way out, and then as you can see here as I'm peeling, my vinyl decal stays down, but the paint does not come with it. If you have any areas where the white shines through because the tape didn't fully make it as a crisp seam, just go ahead and fix that. And then I took some Mod Podge. I ended up having to use gloss because that's all I had at my house, but I usually like to use the matte. I put it over the top and then do big, long, broad strokes to make sure I have an even coat of that over the top. It's gonna look like this once you put it all on, so you're gonna see kind of that white streaky, but don't worry, it's gonna dry clear. If you don't wanna use Mod Podge, you could also use a polyurethane or a polycrylic to just paint it on. I wanna use this as part of a hot cocoa bar throughout the winter, so I wanted to make sure it was protected. Don't worry though, because once it dries, it will look like this, it will dry clear, and you will have a beautiful tray that you can use throughout the winter season, and it was only 10 bucks. When I think of Christmas, I think of Christmas cookies and baking. And so when I saw this cloche for only $12.99, I knew I had to bring it home and figure out a way to hack this for Christmas. It is a very large, in my opinion, and very substantial little cake cloche for 13 bucks. The actual bottom pedestal is gorgeous and I decided to etch the top. 
I went into Cricut Design Space and found some different decals that I wanted to cut out to use as stencils. So all of these images, including the snowflake, gingerbread man, Santa, the tree, the holly, and then the Mrs. Claus's North Pole Bakery were all items that I found within Cricut Design Space. I cut them all out to size. I used a tape measure and figured out how big I wanted them and I decided my little images should be about a two inch square. So I inserted some two inch squares into design space and I put my little images, kind of turned them and figured out how to fit them on there. And once they were all in there, I selected slice down in the right hand corner that created a stencil for me and then I deleted the other two images that were a result. I did that for all of my items so then that gave me a border around each of my pieces to help me have it be a stencil versus just a decal so then that way when I went to put the etching cream on top I had some extra buffer room to protect my glass. Once everything was sized, I just used some scrap brown vinyl that I wasn't going to use. It was left over from another project and I really like to use scrap vinyl when I go to etch as a stencil because it's a good way to use stuff you're not going to use and use up your scraps. Once everything was cut out, I went through and weeded them like stencils. So here you're seeing instead of me taking the outside pieces that you typically would for a decal, I'm getting rid of the pieces where I want it to be etched. So the actual letters and I'm leaving the inside pieces of the R's and the P's etc. Also with the stencil guide boxes around the outside it's a lot easier to weed these so as you can see here I was able to just kind of peel off that top layer and then just get rid of any of the inside pieces to create those stencils as well. I applied my transfer tape and then it was time to put my items onto my cloche. Now here I wanted to make sure that I was kind of covering the whole area. I think I was a little overzealous. If I were to do this again, I would make my decal just a little bit smaller. It would make it easier to go across the curve. But nonetheless, I ended up just going through and cutting some slits within both the vinyl and the transfer tape, as you can see here, to try to get everything to lay down. It was kind of a trial and error, but then I ended up cutting out the two little kind of laurel scallops on either side because I was not having any luck with that. So I just went ahead and chopped those out and then covered those areas with some painter's tape and it ended up sticking a lot better. Those slits in your vinyl are gonna help your vinyl lay flat onto your cloche so then you're going to be able to have a nice clean seal when you put your etching cream on. If you have any areas where you think you're not going to be able to stay within the lines just add some additional painters tape and that will help protect it. Then to etch the glass I'm using armor etch this is what I've used in all of my etching tutorials I like it you can get a bottle like this for about 10 bucks from your local craft store all of them sell them you can also get them on Amazon which I'll link down below. And I'm just taking a regular old paintbrush and I am kind of painting on. It is a little runny, but it's thicker than a paint. So you want to make sure that if you are going to be able to stay within the lines, like I said, you put that painter's tape on there. But it's pretty straightforward. You just kind of put the paste over the top. And then I let this sit for about 30 minutes just because I got doing another project. But I would suggest maybe 15 to 20 minutes to let it sit. And then if you have any extra etching cream on the top that you're able to scrape off, you can scrape it off and put it back in the container. Once I had any excess off, I rinsed off the rest and then I peeled off all my little vinyl bits. By getting it wet with some warm water, it will help it come off pretty easily, especially because it's permanent vinyl. Then the last step was to just take some soap and make sure that I got off all the etching cream and made sure it was nice and clean and let it dry and then you've got this really subtle but very Christmas cake tray and cover that you can put cookies underneath or cakes, cupcakes, whatever you want, cinnamon rolls, that sounds delicious. There are a ton of different options and as you can see here the etching turned out really good around the outside of all my little sporadic pieces and it goes super well with my DIY gingerbread man that I recently made. This tutorial will be coming to my channel shortly, but if you can't wait, you can head over to either my TikTok page or Instagram. Both are whiskey and wit, and I've got video tutorials on both of those pages today. So if you want to see how I made these, head over there. Thanks so much for watching and also remember that all of these projects can be used as inspiration. So if you don't have an Ikea near you or you can't find the exact items, you could definitely recreate them with items you could find at Target, Walmart, or even a thrift store. So this is just to get the ball rolling and get some ideas and inspiration flowing. Be sure to hit subscribe if you're new so you don't miss a future Whiskey and Wit video and I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye!